Hi there, it's Ron Gula from Gula Tech Adventures. This week we're going to talk about the new national cybersecurity strategy. Now, I spent a lot of time working with the various intelligence agencies. I ran Tenable Network Security for, for 16 years, and now I run Gula Tech Adventures. I've had a lot of exposure to these cybersecurity issues that are both political, social, and technological. So I'm going to comment on the five pillars of the new strategy, as well as what I think some of the challenges are. I also had the chance to give input to, uh, to Chris English's team, and I'll share some of that commentary as well. So the first pillar is defend critical infrastructure. And at, at first glance, you know, this really seems something that's straightforward. Of course, we want the power and the, the water and our, our, our systems to flow. But the reality is that more than, you know, most of the industry is commercial and not owned by the federal government. It's covered by states. It's covered by a wide variety of, uh, of, of regulations. So trying to mandate that a uh, critical infrastructure company defend themselves from the Russians and Chinese best cybersecurity attacks is really, really tough to do. It's a tricky, um, it's a tricky approach. Involves a wide variety of frameworks and threat sharing, and it's, it's fairly complex. There's a lot of good things in this thing. It's, it's pretty straightforward. But if you're reading this strategy, you have to keep in mind that most of what they're talking about protecting is not owned by the federal government. Now, the second thing is also fairly straightforward. You know, we want to disrupt the bad guys. And I think 20, 30 years from now, there's going the, the same way we hear about uh, amazing heroic efforts from our intelligence community and special forces during the Cold War. We're going to hear about amazing things that happened during this time where folks like perhaps uh, Cyber Command and other intelligence agencies are actively disrupting the bad guys out there. There's There's such a weird... Um, sort of relationship between these private hacking groups, uh, organized crime, and, uh, and nation states. I think we're going to find out a lot. But regardless of that, it still takes a tremendous amount of effort to coordinate our intelligence community with our, our law enforcement agencies, all being directed by the the, uh, the White House, you know, trying to put hurt and bring some pain to our adversaries. And there's a lot of things in this document in the strategy that talk about what they can be doing to do more with that. Now, the third thing is interesting. We want to have a shape market force to drive security and resilience. Now, who wouldn't want a computer that's imprintable from hackers and malware? The reality, though, is most people don't, right? Most people are readily buying, you know, devices that are not secured and they're putting insecure software on it. And, you know, that's an interesting thing because you can't just mandate that things are secure. There's, we don't have a common definition of what secure is. We don't have a common definition of what resilience is. And there's a lot of really cool sound bites in, in here that talks about, you know, we don't, we don't want to have privacy impacting our population and, and, uh, and those kind of things. But the reality is, is it's hard to put these things into practice. Take somebody like Microsoft, for example. Microsoft, you can run in a classified environment if you take the proper precautions and you secure it. Doesn't mean that the computer I'm recording this on is immune from the best cyber and cyber attacks from Russia and, and, and China. This is a really, really dependent upon your scenario type of, uh, type of journey. And just to basically say that, you know, we need things to be more secure. It's nice, but the, our whole industry for the past 20, 30 years has gotten more and more secure, but it has also gotten used much, much, much more. So I kind of, I kind of wish this one had a little bit more thought process of that. One thing I really do like in the strategy though is it says, look, given the choice between short term Cyber improvements and something that's long term, take that long term approach. And uh, so I think that's, that's pretty good. Now, the section that I had the most issue with, and first of all, I'm going to say like the government's in a really tough spot, right? You got to get input from everybody. You also have to coordinate with other federal agencies. I think this document is a fantastic result of that. Uh, having said that though, I still had some things I, I, I wasn't too, uh, too happy not being in there. So the first thing is invest in a resilient future. And part of the theme of this is that the government wants to rebalance who's in charge of cybersecurity, who's going to control privacy. Now the theory is like my mom and dad, you know, non-cyber people shouldn't have it on themselves to, uh, to defend against Russia and, and China. And uh, I kind of disagree with that. And uh, at the same time, they also said we have to invest in some new technologies. So two things I, I wanted to point out. One, I said, you know, for the there's a section in there where they talk about defeating quantum based attacks on cryptography. And the solution, of course, is using quantum resistant encryption. And having worked at the NSA for a while and just worked with cryptographers for a long time, I understand that. What I don't like, though, is that just looking at the past industry for the last 20, 30 years, there's been a lot of opportunity to do things differently. Attackers do different things all the time. 
I just don't want to do the same thing better. So, so if you want quantum resistive cryptography, I think that's great. What about file sharding? File sharding is something that the GDPR actually recognizes as a valid strategy for storing PII. And if it's good enough for the GDPR, it's probably something we should be thinking about. File sharding is a real simple concept. You take your file, which you could already have encrypted, and you just split it up in tiny, tiny pieces in a proprietary order across many, many different clouds. This makes you available in case one of these vendors goes offline during a war, perhaps. And it also makes it hard, uh, makes it makes it hard for somebody to, to, to uh, steal that back. Now, another thing I, I actually brought up was this concept of data care. Again, the government, the strategy says we're trying to rebalance cybersecurity to those who can. And again, what they're trying to say is that, hey, you know, Microsoft, Google, uh, defense industrial base, you need to do more to protect your customers and, uh, and protect yourselves from, from China and Russia. And, and I get that. I get that. But the, the, the hidden message there, and this is really where I'm, I'm, I really like to talk about the policy of cyber and society and whatnot. I like to talk about data care. I like to say that people have a personal responsibility in choosing where they put their data, the apps they run, the technology they use. They have to have a role in that. We have to educate these people. And I really feel like even though this, the message in the cybersecurity strategy is more strategic in that we're trying to help, you know, make Microsoft do more to defend Microsoft customers. I think there's a lot more that can be done. There's plenty of Microsoft customers out there who are defending themselves just fine. We need to kind of get this broader message out to society and not say that you need to just trust your vendors. Now, the last thing, of course, is a totally awesome, uh, uh, one of the la the fifth pillar is based forge international partnerships and pursue shared goals. If you've seen my video on DC Cyberspeak, I talk about all the different parts of the US government about how they can do intelligence collection, how Cyber Command can actually do effects. There's different titles. I go into all that. And I also go into the fact that, you know, what America does on America's shores might be different than what other countries do on and off their shores and how they do it. So forging these great international partnerships is something akin to the Justice League, where everybody involved has a different type of superpower when it comes to either deterring or directly interdicting cyber aggression, whether it's from nation states or from uh, from ransomware games, organized crime, what, what have you. Regardless of my opinion, I recommend everybody read the document. This administration does a great job. They have a fact that kind of outlines their five main pillars. They made the document public. And you should also go back, if you're a student of this kind of stuff, read the history of the Cyberspace Solarium. The Cyberspace Solarium 2.0 is actually going active strong. The Solarium is what created the Office of the National Cybersecurity Director, which is how we got this document. If you like this type of video and you want to learn more, please, please subscribe to this uh, YouTube channel. Come check us out at Gula.tech or follow us on LinkedIn. I'm Ron Gula from Gula Tech Adventures. Thanks for watching.